Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a slightly different video today. I'm creating a new series of vlogs um, entitled The Layman's Guide 2. And in these videos, I'm gonna be looking at the uh, behavior and the lifestyle of a specific animal in a lot more detail. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while, so uh, this is the first one. And in this video, we're gonna look at red foxes. And I think they're absolutely fantastic and fascinating animals. Um, they don't live very long. Uh, in the wild, generally they live for about one to three years. Um, they can live up to about nine years. Uh, in captivity, of course, they generally live a bit longer. Uh, but yeah, they're lovely animals to watch. They're lovely animals to photograph graph and the pups are born in spring um, and when the pups are born they're born with a waterproof coat and um, so that means uh, if it rains they're fine uh, they can go through the summer without getting waterlogged but the adults on the other hand they molt their winter coat uh, in early spring and for the rest of the year uh, the summer they've got a uh, their summer coat and that's not waterproof so actually one of the things I really want to get on film photograph and uh, maybe take some footage of, is a waterlogged uh, fox shaking its fur and to get dry again. As I say, you don't see the pups do that because they've got that waterproof coat. So I'm not gonna uh, do any more to camera now. Uh, as I say, there's lots of slow motion footage coming up, lots of stills, and all the facts you're gonna ever, probably ever need to know about red foxes. So uh, bye for now. One of the reasons uh, red foxes are so successful in the UK um, and their numbers are, are pretty stable and uh, they're doing reasonably well and one of the reasons for that is is because they are they're omnivores and they'll eat almost anything so they'll eat uh, rabbits rodents uh, small birds if they can get uh, get their teeth on them uh, invertebrates so they'll eat worms and beetles uh, fruits and berries um, so they've got a very wide uh, diet which you know makes it easier for them to find food and uh, in urban settings uh, they'll also eat obviously leftovers from us humans and uh, you know lots of people put food out uh, for foxes as well and and that helps uh, keep their numbers up so they're uh, a hugely successful uh, mammal and uh, they're very very adaptable so they've got a wide ranging diet and they're really adaptable and they can live both in the countryside uh, and in urban uh, environments Red foxes are not a particularly big mammal. Um, they weigh the males about five um, to eight kilograms. The biggest ones occasionally weigh in at about 10 kilograms and the females a little bit lighter than that. Um, and if you were to measure them up to their sort of um, chest, they're about 40 centimeters high and uh, the body's about 65 centimeters long and the tail, that big bushy tail, um, is normally around about 50 centimeters long. So um, they're not a huge mammal, but you know, sort of a, a mid range dog size, I would say, uh, but absolutely beautiful animals and um, they've got this lovely red coat uh, hence the reason they're called red foxes with that white breast and uh, a little bit of white around the uh, around the muzzle as well so I think they're a, a really beautiful um, animal to, to watch and photograph one of the uh, most interesting facts um, I found out about red foxes is the fact uh, that they've got scent glands uh, in their paws, which means if they're walking down a, um, a trail or a pathway in, a, say, a woodland or a forest on a regular basis, they automatically lay down a, a trail of scent, which means finding these trails at night, when obviously it's a lot harder to do, uh, is easier for the foxes because all they have to do is follow their own scent trail. So I, ju I just thought that was a, a really clever and... Uh, unusual adaptation it's like that you know ev evolution isn't it and uh, it's amazing these sort of i don't know special powers uh, animals have uh, come into play and i think that's definitely a fox superpower if you ask me uh, foxes are quite um, silent animals. Generally, you don't hear foxes that often. Uh, you know, they make their way through the uh, forest, uh, silently gliding through these woodland paths. And um, when you do hear them, it's either a bark or um, can be quite an eerie scream, actually. And uh, the time you're going to hear them most often is during the breeding season in winter. So winter time is, is the time you're going to hear the dog foxes. So that's the male foxes barking. And the females, um, they admit this sort of almost really shrill sort of screaming noise and as I say during the, uh, the breeding season that's when you're going to hear foxes the most often and as I say they breed in the winter and then the vixen will normally have four to five cubs they're born underground um, in a, an earth or a den normally called an earth and the foxes um, uh, the fox cubs they'll be underground for at least two weeks and the female will look after, look after those foxes those fox cubs are underground for that two weeks and then about four weeks later, uh, or about four weeks um, after they've been born, the fox cubs normally start to venture above ground. And uh, 
Uh, they'll stay close to the uh, the earth or the den, and uh, the female will be obviously continue to feed them. And then uh, the cubs become independent round about that autumn. Um, so uh, some of them will go off and find their own territories. Others will hang around with the family group because you tend to find uh, foxes really stick together in a small family group. So you've got the male, which is a dog fox, the female, the vixen. Uh, and then uh, a number of cubs and sometimes the cubs as I say will disperse uh, you know during the autumn time some will stick around um, to uh, in, in that loose family group uh, some will possibly even the next year help the female bring food in for the new cubs it it really depends on how much food is um, available actually and an area that's got a lot of food you're more likely to get some of the cubs sticking around Foxes uh, fall under the category of uh, crepuscular uh, types of animals, which means they are more active uh, in the mornings and the evenings. Although I've seen foxes during the daytime and they're out and about during the night, but their most active time is early morning uh, and then late afternoon into the evening. And uh, that's when they'll do most of their hunting. The amount of foxes or the number of foxes living in a certain area it's all down again to uh, the availability of food. If there's a high availability of food, there's less competition from family group to family group, and I've seen this in certain areas, so the numbers will be higher. If food is scarce, then the density of foxes in a particular area will, of course, be much lower. And if you've got a fox in, say, highland er areas or upper, you know, sort of um, hilly areas, then there's going to be less food around, so the density of foxes will be much less, and their territories will be much larger than the territory of, say, an urban fox, where there's a lot of food around, so they don't have to range so far to, to get enough food to keep them alive. It's a it's simple uh, supply and demand, isn't it? If there's a lot of food around, there'll be a high densi dens density sorry, of foxes than if there's a small amount of food around. When it comes to finding uh, a den on earth to give birth, uh, foxes will use all sorts of things. In the countryside, uh, they may well enlarge uh, a rabbit hole. Uh, some foxes will use an, an abandoned... Um, badger set and then in an urban environment I mean sometimes they'll also dig out from scratch their own um, their own earths or their own dens because they're very accomplished diggers in their own right uh, in the uh, urban setting often badgers will use uh, like the underneath of a shed or something like that or a really deep sort of set of brambles sometimes but the underside of a shed is often a good place to look because you know if that shed the floor of it is up on bricks and there's a gap then uh, foxes often utilise those spaces. So again, they're very adaptable creatures. Spotting foxes can be quite difficult. Um, they're a, a silent animal, like all of our wildlife in the UK. They're very good at creeping around, not getting spotted by, by us humans. Uh, they've been persecuted for centuries and it's made them very wary. So spotting a fox uh, out in the countryside is quite tricky. And it's uh, a case of looking for uh, footprints, looking for um, their scats, which is, you know, uh, fox poo and uh, and then just spending time out in the field and finding where these areas where foxes might be but probably the best bet for foxy, uh, spotting foxes is uh, in an urban environment they're a lot less wary of people and the density of foxes in urban areas is often higher so if you want to make a great great evenings uh, fox watching or fox spotting then urban areas are a really good uh, a really good shout and uh, I've, I've seen and photographed uh, foxes in both urban and countryside settings. Although the mortality rate for red foxes uh, is quite high, uh, they're often killed um, by cars on the roads, uh, by gamekeepers, by farmers. Because of their adaptability, uh, the numbers in the UK are quite stable. We have good numbers of red foxes and that's fantastic because um, red foxes are such beautiful animals to watch. Uh, they've got this deep red coat, the white breast, you know, the little white patch around the muzzle and they're very social. They live in these family groups as I've already mentioned and you'll often see the cubs playing and they're jumping around and playing with their, with their, their parents and uh, seemingly enjoying life. It really brings a smile uh, to your face, doesn't it? Or it does to me anyway. So the fact that we have good stable numbers due to their adaptability and the fact that they uh, will obviously live in the countryside but can live in urban areas and the fact that they can eat so many different types of food has kept their numbers at a, a constant and good number. And I am so pleased about that because... I love photographing red foxes and watching red foxes and long may that continue.
An urban setting, as I mentioned, uh, is a really good place to um, spot foxes. And I had a great um, fox encounter a few days ago in my back garden. I was sitting in my back garden, reading my book, minding my own business, and this young fox jumped off on the fence. The fence is six foot high and they are really good climbers. Fox can clear or get over an obstacle at least two meters high. So garden fences are no problems for foxes. It jumped up onto my fence zone, looked at me, jumped back down into my next door neighbor's garden, walked around the back of her garden, jumped on the back fence, which is not quite so high, looked at me again, jumped down into my garden, walked under, under one of my shrubs, stayed there for about a couple of minutes, and then came back out again, looked at me, sauntered off, jumped up the fed, up onto the fence again, uh, walked onto uh, my next door neighbor but one's uh, garden shed, sat on the roof for a little while and then disappeared. It was absolutely brilliant, spellbinding. It was such a good encounter and it was just in my back garden. It was a great, great thing to see and it brightened up my day immensely. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a like, a thumbs up, that would be great. It really helps my channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, if you can think about subscribing, that would be brilliant. Uh, and then last but not least, if you've enjoyed this, type, this sort of co uh, content and you'd like to see more of these videos uh, on my channel, if you can just drop a comment uh, in the uh, comment section below, let me know. That would be brilliant. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you on my next video. Bye for now.